What happened to Gilbert O'Sullivan? Raymond Edward O'Sullivan was born in Cork Road, Waterford, Ireland on December 1st, 1946. He was one of six children with a mother who managed a candy shop and a father who worked for Clover Meats as a butcher. The O'Sullivans moved to England because of a career opportunity. When Raymond was seven years old, the family relocated to Battersea, London before settling in Swindon, Wiltshire a year later. O'Sullivan's piano lessons were short-lived because he disliked music theory and preferred to perform the pieces by ear instead. Raymond's father passed away just two years after the family relocated to Swindon. Raymond attended St. Joseph's Catholic College before pursuing a graphic design degree at Swindon College. He participated in a number of semi-professional bands during this time, including the Doodles, the Prefects, and most notably Rick's Blues, with Malcolm Mabbitt on guitar, Keith Ray on bass, and founder Rick Davies. O'Sullivan learned to play the drums and keyboard from Davies, who eventually founded Supertramp. O'Sullivan's drumming influences piano technique, which frequently employs a distinctive percussive piano pattern. He began creating songs after being highly affected by the Beatles songwriting and Bob Dylan's performance. O'Sullivan arrived in London from Swindon in 1967 to pursue a career in music. He designed an eye-catching visual appearance consisting of a pudding basin haircut, cloth cap, and short jeans in order to acquire a record deal and stand out. The look was inspired by O'Sullivan's love of silent films according to him. After coming to the attention of professional manager Stephen Shane, who proposed changing his name from Ray to Gilbert as a play on the operetta authors Gilbert and Sullivan, he landed a five-year contract with April Music, CBS Records' house publishing company. Mike Smith, the A&R manager for The Tremolos, The Marmalade, and The Love Affair signed him to CBS Records. Disappear, produced by Mike Smith and released in November 1967 under the moniker Gilbert, was his first single. It, like his second song, What Can I Do, issued in April 1968, failed to chart. In 1969, he switched to the Irish record label Major Minor, which resulted in a third single, Mr. Moody's Garden which was once again unsuccessful. Following that, O'Sullivan sent sample tapes to Gordon Mills, the manager of Tom Jones, and he was signed to Mills' newly formed label, MAM Records. Mills is said to have despised O'Sullivan's self-made persona, but O'Sullivan insists on using it at first. O'Sullivan's distinct characteristic look drew a lot of attention, and he was frequently compared to the Bisto King. With nothing rhymed, O'Sullivan had his first UK top 10 hit at the end of 1970, and it also went to number one the Netherlands, earning him his first gold disc. Throughout 1971, O'Sullivan had hits with Underneath the Blanket Go, We Will, and No Matter How I Try, the latter of which was nominated for Best Ballad or Romantic Song at the 17th Ivor Novello Awards in 1972. In August 1971, O'Sullivan released his debut album himself. It was well received by critics who compared O'Sullivan's observant and conversational songwriting style to that of Paul McCartney and Randy Newman. O'Sullivan chose not to tour in support of the album, but he did appear on British television many times in 1971, most notably on an episode of BBC in Concert which aired on December 18, 1971. With The Lone Again Naturally, a ballad about suicide and death, O'Sullivan became a great international sensation in 1972. It charted at number 3 in the United Kingdom, number 1 in the United States, spending 6 non-consecutive weeks at number 1 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and selling nearly 2 million copies, number 2 in New Zealand, which spent 11 weeks on the charts in New Zealand, number 1 in Canada for 2 weeks and 13 weeks in the top 40, and number one Japan, and spent 21 weeks in Japan on the charts. Only Roberta Flax, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face, outsold O'Sullivan's hit in total U.S. sales in 1972. In 1973, both songs were nominated for Grammy Awards in the categories of Song of the Year and Record of the Year, but Flack won both. This international triumph came at the same time as O'Sullivan ditched the look he'd worn since 1967. He debuted a more modern college-like appearance, typically wearing a pullover with a giant letter G on it. This was done on purpose to avoid creating an impact like Tiny Tim in the United States, 
which would have taken years to shake off. And the update American edition of himself, which include Alone Again Naturally, include an updated photograph of O'Sullivan on the album artwork. Following the success of Alone Again Naturally, O'Sullivan released Claire, which charted at number two in the United States and number one in the United Kingdom. In Norway, France, Belgium, Ireland, and Canada, it also went to number one as well, and it spent 14 weeks in the Canadian top 40. Back to front, the album that gave birth to it, and O'Sullivan's second, had another hit with Out of the Question, which reached number 17 in the United States and number 14 in Canada. In 1972, O'Sullivan's disc sales surpassed 10 million, making him the year's biggest star. O'Sullivan's success earned him a spot on the BBC's 50 Years of Music Celebration broadcast in November 1972. O'Sullivan was named the number one male performer in 1972 by Record Mirror. I'm a rider, not a fighter. O'Sullivan's third album was released in 1973, and it highlighted a new emphasis on rock music and funk influences. The electric keyboard bass Get Down, the album's lead single, hit number one in the United Kingdom, Belgium, and Germany, number seven in the United States and Canada, and number three in the Netherlands. Get Down was O'Sullivan's third million seller, following Alone Again Naturally and Claire and received the RIAA Gold Disc Award on September 18, 1973. His single Christmas song hit number 12 in the UK and number 5 in Ireland in November 1974. With MAM or MAM, O'Sullivan had 7 UK Top 10 singles and 4 UK Top 10 albums, 3 US Top 10 singles and 1 Top 10 album, 5 Dutch Top 10 singles and 3 Top 10 albums, five New Zealand top 10 singles, three Canadian top 10 singles, and seven Japan top 10 singles in nearly five years. By 1974, his sales had dwindled. A Stranger in My Own Backyard, his fourth album, was his first to try outside of the top five on the UK albums chart, at number nine. Its debut track, A Woman's Place, sparked debate because of its lyric, I believe a woman's place is in the house which was interpreted as sexist by some. This was O'Sullivan's first single outside the top 40 of the UK singles chart since his breakthrough in 1970, peaking at number 42. I Don't Love You But I Think I Like You, O'Sullivan's last top 20 song was released in June 1975. Gilbert's sixth album with MAM, Southpaw, was released in 1977, however it failed to chart. Gordon Mills, the label's proprietor, benefited substantially from O'Sullivan's recording deal with MAM Records. Following that, there was a lengthy legal battle concerning how much money his songs had made and how much of that money he had received. In May 1982, the court ruled in favor of O'Sullivan, calling him a honest and nice guy who had not gotten a fair share of the large sums of money generated by his songs. Even though he had won the case, his music career was placed on hold. He returned to his previous record label, CBS, in 1980, following a five-year sabbatical. What's in a Kiss was the first single, which charted at number 19 in the UK and number 21 in Japan in 1980. It was his first top 20 success in the United Kingdom in five years. Between 1983 and 1986, O'Sullivan did not release any new material due to the fact of the ongoing MAM legal battle. Apart from the song So What in 1990 and the compilation album Nothing But The Best in 1991, O'Sullivan remained off the charts until 2004, when he was reintroduced to the UK Top 20 with the very vest of Gilbert O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan has recorded and performed far into the 21st century. He is well liked in Japan. In 2007, he published his album A Scruff at Heart, which included the song Just So You Know. He performed at the Glastonbury Festival in 2008 and the Royal Albert Hall in London in October 2009. In August 26, 2010, O'Sullivan announced that he had joined Hypertension, a record company whose artists have included Leo Sayer, Chris DeBerg, Fleetwood Mac, and Jerry Rafferty. On January 31, 2011, he released his album Gilbertville, which included the single Where Would We Be Without T? and the song All They Wanted to Say, which dealt with the 2001 World Trade Center attacks. O'Sullivan sang live on the BBC Radio 2 Ken Bruce Show on July 19, 2011. 
On August 26th that year, BBC4 aired the documentary Out On His Own. Gilbert O'Sullivan, the very best of, a singer and his songs, debuted at number 12 on the UK Albums Chart in March 2012. Gilbert resurfaced on Irish and BBC Radio in 2015. He toured Ireland in early June, and he later released a Peggy Lee-inspired new album in 2015, June 8th. Gilbert O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan's 19th studio album was released on August 24th, 2018. His first UK charting studio album in nearly 40 years debuted at number 20 on the UK album chart. And in 2022, he is going on a little bit of a tour. He started in March 4th. He was in Texas. And it's going to continue on for another few months. He'll take some breaks here and there. It will end on December 8th when he's in Holland. So he's still alive and well as of the recording of this video in mid-March 2022. And that's what happened to Gilbert O'Sullivan. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And here are some of my favorite songs of his that he has done over the years. Let me know if you've seen him live. Let me know some of your favorite songs. And I'll see you in the next video.